Hi there, and welcome to the Creatives Get Real podcast. I'm Robin Marie Smith. And I'm Sandy Keen. And these are real conversations between two artists sitting, yeah. looking at each other over the computer because we can't be together. Oh, and I so miss being together. I hope, I, I, hope, I hope soon. I hope soon. So yes, yeah, that would be yeah. lovely. Yeah. But we have had some really fun podcasts the last few have really been fun. Actually, when I was going through and kind of editing and listening, I was like, I'm actually laughing because it was like, I thought it was so fun and joyful. I'm like, yeah, these are good. Yes, I've enjoyed them. You know, I listen to them again after we do it. I listen to it again because I'm doing show notes and things. And I enjoyed listening too. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, this is what we need right now right. is encouragement and positivity and support and just some good, fun mm -hmm. podcasting with a bent towards art. Mm -hmm. talking about good fun things so yeah yeah I hope, yes well you know last week we talked about um reclaiming our space after a big project mm -hmm. and so we were talking about that and of course you know i had just finished up the 100 day project so i'm i'm in i'm not done by any means i'm still in the process of it but i've decided to make it a bigger deal than it was going to be like not just cleaning off the table like i'm going to be really doing some stuff yeah i'm kind of you know it's been years since i did the big overhaul Mm -hmm. And I think this time it's turning into a little bit more of an overhaul. So it's going to take me a little while, but you know what I'm enjoying is just being alone in my thoughts and puttering and just kind of going through stuff and going, mm, cause I have acquired some things that I definitely don't need, you know, since the time I did the big, you know, the big overhaul, it's time again. Uh, you're the only one in the world though. No, no one else has done that. Nobody. <laughs> so I'm like, Hmm. So I'm kind of, and I think I just need that right now. So I'm, yes. it's going to take me a lot longer. I'm kind of in the middle of it. It's not finished yet, but anyway, I wanted to give an update since we had talked about that. Yeah. Well, week, so. can you just tell us just a little bit more? Like, what did you come across that you said, Oh, I want to add this into this. Like I want to organize this or I want to mm -hmm. minimize. So just give us a little update. Well, when we had talked about one of the things I did was I, downsize my table. So my mm -hmm. workspace is a little bit smaller. And when I, when I did the studio overhaul some years ago, I decided that I wanted a lot of things to kind of be hidden away where I wasn't yep. distracted and it wasn't too much, but now I'm finding that I need to bring some of that out. I, not okay. all of it, but I want to organize it in a way where I can see some of the things that when I look at them, they make me happy, like seeing all my brushes or seeing an assortment of my pastels or whatever that is going to require me to kind of move some things around and kind of reorganize, but the table is smaller now. So having them kind of set where I can still reach them and they're still nearby and they're not tucked in a drawer, I mm -hmm. think is what I need now. It, it just feels right to move in that direction. Not completely, but just sort of like a happy medium, I think. So, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. There, There is something that's uplifting about looking at like pastel, soft pastels, which we yeah. talked about. They're so beautiful. Yes, yes. And you put those in, you know, a gorgeous mm -hmm. bowl or on mm -hmm. a tray. Yeah. And there's something about just walking past that mm -hmm. that makes you happy. Yeah. You know, and I think too, I'm I'm kind of in a different place, which will segue nicely into our topic today. Mm -hmm. I'm in a different place now. And so I feel like, okay, then I was so stressed out by the mess and everything out that I wanted it all hidden away. Right and now I'm ready to kind of like, I think I want that inspiration. I want that, whatever that, you know, bucket or that basket of papers that I've painted. I want that nearby and I want these colorful pencils in this, you know, so I'm starting to feel differently, which maybe goes along with how our art evolves and how our art practice evolves and how we, we change and things kind of grow, which again, segues into our topic today. Yes. Our topic today is loving where you are on your art journey. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. came about, I know that you hear this a lot and I hear it as well at times where people in their progress and their process of becoming a more confident artist or to becoming a business person um, get frustrated mm -hmm. with the, I can't do, I can't, I can't. I remember sitting across the table from you <laughs> when you used to always say, I can't draw. I can't draw anything. Right. And I'm like, um, dude, I've seen your art. Yes, you can. <laughs> you know, if you're talking about illustrating a children's book, mm -hmm. like, you know, Winnie the Pooh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> but you can draw a flower. You can draw mm -hmm. a leaf. You can draw a circle. 
There are things yeah. you can draw some freaky looking faces. Yes, we did go through that stage, didn't we? <laughs> we did. I think what, and I think what this brings up what I was thinking when you said that it's it. We need to complete the sentence. It's like I can't draw like so and so, and then therefore it it just paralyzes you. I can't draw like that, so I'm not going to draw, or I can't draw. And it's like right. Well, practice, pick up the pen, pick up the pencil, you know, and then you go, Oh, well, maybe I can draw a little bit. And then you start going, but the drawing and the result is more you and your personality right. and what you're about, not what whoever you're looking at and you want to duplicate what they're doing. Cause you love that, but it's like, you're not going to be able to. Right. You know? So I think that is a challenge when we're on our art journey. And I think, I, I don't think it's to be content and p- complacent where you are and not striving to improve, but being happy with where you are brings you so much joy that, you know, look at it and say, wow, okay, look what I'm accomplishing. Look what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I love this. No, it doesn't look like so-and-so's no, it's not whatever, but it's mine. And I did this. And therefore I'll just continue to keep honing my skills and growing. And then what's to come next. Right. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's, it is, it is about seeing the progress that you've made, you know, from the first time that you did watercolor, you did pastels, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. did collage. And, you know, I just, I told you that I have been struggling trying to do paper collage. We were doing it this month in a class that I teach with Ray Missiman called pocket doc. And Mm -hmm. I had to film my foot through (laughs) So I had to put on, you know, for the world to see (laughs) my pathetic, I mean, seriously, I'm not being like modest or anything. These are horrible. Mm. And I was filming them and I was talking to Ray and I said, I know when you see them, you're not going to know what to say. So I just suggest that you say, well, bless your heart. (laughs) That's a Southern thing for those of y'all that aren't sure. And sometimes we say, bless your little heart. That's a nice way of saying, good for you, but it's crap. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, even though I had to do, I don't know, like 15, 16 of them, they they progressively actually got worse, not better. I mean, I just got so frustrated and I just like, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you have experiences like that, you know, mm-hmm. and you're like so frustrated, why can't I do this? Robin Marie can do it. <laughs> I have I have one of hers framed in my room. They're beautiful. Why can't I do that? It's like, okay, but what can you do? Mm-hmm. What That's do right. you do mm-hmm. that, that is your wheelhouse? That's right. Yeah. Like I can watercolor. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, and you've watercolor. gotten each time, you're just continually improving and getting better and amazing what you what you do now it's like Thank looking you. back and I mean you started out I mean you, you always had that skill and that talent but literally it's like wow when I see them pop up in my Instagram feed it's like oh my gosh you know well, you know I've made progress I've yep. gotten somewhere mm-hmm. and I can't look at I don't know who's a great watercolorist, you know, any of the watercolorists Mm -hmm. out there. Um, Esther Peck, there's one. She's Mm -hmm. phenomenal. Um, I I will never be Esther Peck, but you know, that's not my goal. No, my goal is to be the best watercolorist Sandy King can be. That's right. That's exactly right. (laughs) Yeah. So avoiding comparison, that is our first suggestion that we do. And but don't do that. That being said, we still do it. We, everyone I mean, does. you just said that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you said it about the collage and then it's like, my name popped into your head. It's like, no, absolutely. but it's like, no, but I think it's hard for us. I, I, I it is. I and mean, even we do it, but just mm-hmm. reminding yourself, okay, I'm not that person. I want to aspire to improve and to get better and to increase my skill set. That's good enough. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Just try to get a little bit better than you. You know, it, it's <laughs> like, like all, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all those times when um, you see these big competition shows, whether it's Project Runway or any of those, and they're, they're talking about, you know, your goal is you're, you're um, in this against you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The other people are in this against them. 
there it's not like we're against each other even That's though right. it's set up that way mm -hmm. but you really do have to just try to improve you and right don't look at what anybody else is you doing know, and and we're all unique in our own odd weird ways right so wouldn't you want to be your own unique you i mean why would you want to look like everybody else or have your right. work look just like so and so's i mean aspire to improve and use things like you know other people's work or whatever to kind of inspire you but mm -hmm. aspire to be you right and you know i know i'm never going to be able to draw or sketch like some but what i've done is my husband says it's a very um cartoonish i think is something that he used and of course i wasn't sure whether i took that as a compliment or not he goes no it's just like your drawings are just kind of like they're very whimsical and weird looking and then he's kind of like looking at you like well you're kind of weird so all right it kind of goes with you know but yeah so i think it's it's that it's okay to be different and unique in your own art i mean if mm -hmm. we were all the same it'd be kind of boring yeah it would um like in florals this makes me think of this is um i don't i don't particularly i'm not drawn towards people that um paint realistic florals mm -hmm. i like loose florals i mm -hmm. like interpretive florals i like yeah. florals where there's colors in it that you don't rare you rarely see in a color mm -hmm. um in in a flower that's what i'm trying to say sure. colors mm -hmm. that you don't normally see right. in a flower um that's what i like so i should never strive to be you know a botanical illustrator for some field guide right it's right it's not gonna happen <laughs> but you want me to illustrate a calendar yes please right there you go yeah yeah okay. so it is about your wheelhouse we talked about mm -hmm. this long ago stay mm -hmm. in your lane right what, what is it that you love and you want to do mm -hmm. and don't look outside put on the blinders mm -hmm. and look at That's other right. people for encouragement inspiration support but mm -hmm. never comparison. Right. So let's talk about where we're at right now, like in, in our, in our journey, because I really do feel like, I, I don't feel like I'm ever going to be completely satisfied with this is what I want to stick with. And I think a lot of that stems from my propensity to get bored very easily. It's like, ah, oh, I'm ready to move on to something else. Can we just finish the hundred day project? And I've been, some questions have been coming in. Well, are, what do you, how do you feel? You know, what does it feel like? I'm like, actually, I need a break. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. ready for a break. It was a lot. It took me 120 days to do 100 days. And, but I still really like what I was doing and I'd like to expand on it in some way. I don't know what that looks like, but you know, even that journey went from, it transitioned and evolved as it got to the end. And so I feel like I want to continue to improve and learn and grow. And I think for me, that direction is going bigger. Um, I, I'm just scared to go big when it comes to art and I'd like to, but I just keep holding myself back. Mm. So that's something I would like to, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm very happy and content, but I still want to have that goal and strive for something else and try it to see if I can do it. Not one time, not sit down in the studio and get a big canvas out and go, well, that didn't work. I'm done with that. I've been there before. Right. I've done that, but I don't want to do that. I want to be like, okay. So how about you? How do you feel? Where are you? I mean, what is your continued journey, your contentment now, but yet you want to strive for something else? Yeah. Um, you know, I've been on this watercolor journey for two years. I've gotten to the point where I feel competent. Mm. Like if I, I no longer sit down and say, I want to draw a flower or I want to do a bouquet or a vase or whatever and look at it and go, well, that's, a, I don't even know what that is. You know? <laughs> if I say I'm going to do this, I can do this now. Yeah, so yeah. that is, that's huge. And mm -hmm. I'm really thrilled. So now my big goal is to break some of my barriers. Mm -hmm. And I have very um, good girl in the box <laughs> barriers that I'm constantly, constantly mm -hmm. fighting. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to be messier. I want to be more, more um, colorful, mm -hmm. color mixing where it's unexpected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring more mess like pastels, soft pastels, because mm -hmm. like you, I find them messy. Mm -hmm. um, like I don't particularly enjoy 
I looked at my keyboard the other day on my computer. I'm like, okay, obviously had some pastels on my hands. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I had some blue keys on my computer. I'm like, okay. So I don't particularly like that, but I want to either mm-hmm. live with the fact that I'm going to wear gloves when I do it or get over myself. Mm-hmm. And just embrace the mess. I'm not sure which way I'm going. Yeah. Yet. But you, but that's been something that you, you know, has been part of your journey too, is to get looser and messier yes. and, Constant. you know, and it's not, it's funny because I'm the opposite. I, I can't be, you know, I can't do you in it, in that way. It's like, uh, it just, it doesn't come out that way from my brain to my hand to whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'll hear my students and people say, well, how do you, how do you just get messy and do it freely? And you're like, I can't explain it exactly. There's just that's the only way I can do it, you know? Right. But, um, but that's good though, because that's a, that's a something you can kind of see as a progression and it's only paper, right? Right. If you don't like it, cut it up and use it in something else. Absolutely. It's not precious. Exactly. For me, it, I I think what I'm going to have to do is like, when I go to do pieces, I'm going to have to sit down with a list Mm. act to remind myself. (laughs) Seriously. I mean, I've been at art for decades and I still have to remind myself, you know, color outside the lines, Mm -hmm. you know, be bold, brave, splatter, mess, go for it. Mm -hmm. And I will be painting and I'll look down and I've got this tight grip on this tiny little detail brush. Like what the heck am I doing? No, Mm -hmm. no. (laughs) So it's very hard for me to push yeah. out of that, but mm-hmm. that's, that is my current goal. Cool. All right. Yeah. Good. So someday somebody's going to look at the feed and go, is that Rob Marie or is that Sandy? <laughs> I don't know. They look just alike. <laughs> They're both messy. There's little wild. fingerprints on there. <laughs> like, what is that? Yeah. It looks like somebody just spritzed it with water and it just <laughs> spread all over the paper. Yeah. yeah that yeah, would be fun. nice. Good fun. Good fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about being fully you rather than wanting to recreate someone Mm -hmm. else's style. And don't we all go through this when, Mm -hmm. especially when we're in the beginning stages, we find two or three people that Mm -hmm. we're just dying. If only I could do this like they do. Right. Yeah. No, been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. We all do that sure. because in those beginning times, you know, you're trying to figure out, first of all, what medium do you like? And mm-hmm. we've talked about this before in past episodes where it's like, try different things. And you might find that, well, I'm not really drawn to that. And I don't want to force myself into something I don't feel naturally is working for me. And right. so and we, you know, we talked earlier about that comparison thing and, you know, being uniquely you rather than trying to be like somebody else and not, I think if you can just do your art and create and just let it's so hard because it's so cliche to say, just let it happen. Let it do its thing. But that's really how it works. Mm -hmm. It's not sitting down because it's, it's really hard if you're going to sit down and try to duplicate what somebody else has done. I I don't know very many people who can do that. Right. I mean, I know that the masters had their, their understudies and that was something that they did, but I don't really want to do that. I don't have the patience to do that. And I don't Mm -hmm. know, but I think that you, you know, absolutely find those that inspire you and, you know, what are they using? What are, you know, but then go at it from your own. It's like, here's an example. It's like somebody asks you, what's your favorite paintbrush? You know, what brush do you like to use? Which one do you always grab when you're sitting there? And it's probably not going to be the one that other people are using. It's going to be the one that is the one you like. Right. And I was thinking about this the other day because I was, as I've been kind of going through cleaning out everything. I was looking at the brushes and like, which ones? And you know, it's the brush I least expected. It's a filbert. It's like a wa- an oval wash brush. Mm-hmm. That thing is so nasty. I totally need a new one. Like I need a new one in all different sizes, but I keep grabbing that brush, but it's bigger and it holds a lot of water and allows me to be super messy. Mm-hmm. And so, but then yet I try to grab some of the other ones and they're just not working for me at that moment. So it's like, I always grab that same brush. So don't stifle yourself if somebody you admire says, this is the brush I use. This is the that I use. And you're trying to force yourself into that. It's not yeah. going to work, you know? Yeah. For me, it's always thinking that brush is the secret to their success. Oh, Guess God. what? It's nope. not. Mm-mm. That's it's right. brain. 
That's exactly <laughs> right. The brush. It's the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do the same thing. You know, if, if this wasn't the times that it was, it would be so interesting for you and I to sit across the table from each other and switch brushes. Yes. yes. Like you use oh. my smaller brushes. I'll use your bigger brushes. Oh and boy. See what, yeah. And I know you would say this thing holds way too much water. It's too messy. And I'd be going, this thing doesn't hold enough water. I can't get, I can't splash on here and do what I want. It would be so funny. Wouldn't yes, it be interesting? Right. Yes, it would. Here, you can only use these supplies. Like you pick, I pick, and then we switch. He's like, this is what you get to work with. And be like, yes. oh boy. That would be so fun. So you set up your desk. Yeah. I set up my desk. And then we walk around to the other yes. person's okay. side. We are going to do this when we are able to get together. Absolutely okay. do this. And you know, what'd be fun is if, you know, we could even talk it through as a podcast or we could film it, who knows, but we have to say, we're definitely going to try that when the time is right. We'll do it. Cause that would yes. be fun. Yeah. It would be so fun. But think about what a challenge that would be for you. I mean, for us to get anybody who did it to be like, okay, you know, you're, you're breaking out of that what you always are using too and just kind of mm -hmm. seeing what that's like but but that's what makes us all unique it's not just how our art turns out it's even the stuff we use when we're creating it too definitely and the way we think about yeah. things and mm -hmm. what we're inspired by yeah. And, yeah and our process like some people mm -hmm. i imagine that when you work that you are up and down i imagine that you take breaks um that yours is more sporadic where <laughs> mine is I sit down, my butt doesn't leave the chair until no. I'm done. No, that, you're right. You pegged me. That's exactly it. Like I got okay. to get up and I get distracted. I'm like, Oh, but I'm going to do that. Oh, and then I'm going to go get something to eat. And then I come back or I get up and I look around. Yeah, no, up and down, moving around. It's very much like that. And sometimes okay. it's okay. I'm going to sit that aside and then I'm going to bring up something else over here and then I'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good, that's a, a not, an interesting observation, but yeah. But then yet, our style sort of reflects that, it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. Yeah. If you put my piece and your piece down, you're like, okay, which person sat and did the whole thing, didn't move, and which one danced around the room with, you know, a snack in their mouth, they would know. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. That's an interesting I observation, do but true. Yeah. So true. It'd be like having a, a, like a camera on us while we're working and then kind of looking back and be like, oh, wow, it's like totally different every approach. Yeah. But that's, yes. but that's what makes us unique in how we do things too, mm -hmm. personalities and all of it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So we have another, one other point, right? We have one more. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. We covered it all. We wow. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really, let's go over it again about okay. avoiding comparison. Mm -hmm. Try not to be frustrated by your present limitations just to, to, to be celebrating your successes mm -hmm. and your progress. And being full of you rather than wanting to recreate yeah. someone else's style. And, you know, there was one thing you said there about, about limitations. Limitations can come in so many forms. Limitations could be your workspace, your creative space. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone has a room or a, a solo table. Some of you are working on a dining room table or the kitchen. Don't let that, don't let that stop you. I used to have to work at the dining room table and, mm -hmm. and it was, I only had a small space to work in. It could be so. your supplies. It could be right now, this is what you can afford and what you have. Embrace that and use that. Don't let those things limit you where you're thinking, if I only had this, this, and this, or more room or this, I could be a better artist. I could be more creative because right. that is just a false mindset. It is. It's That's, not. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if budget, you know, because if when you... I remember back in the beginning and when I looked at people's, um, you know, studios, they had studios and they had cupboards full of every supply. And, you know, I had a tote, mm -hmm. you know, the kind that like a bathroom cleaning product caddy. And yep. that's what I had to start mm -hmm. with, Yeah, you know, and that's where my supplies were. It can be intimidating. You think, yes. well, you know, how can I do what you're doing when I have this? But Here's the thing. Don't it, doesn't it always really come down to about what was in the caddy is what's on your table and what you're working yes. with anyway. Yeah. I mean, sometimes those things change, but yeah. 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 Because all the stuff can sometimes be so overwhelming. 
that you, you you're yeah. you're you're just paralyzed. Exactly. If yeah. I have to choose blue out of forty two shades, I'm exactly. gonna be here a while. Oh, if no. I can yeah. do it out of three, I got yes. a shot. <laughs> That's so true. It's like if I go, when we go over to the beach for, you know, a little getaway and I'll take the smallest amount of stuff, you know, just small little, you know, small journal, some of my stuff. It's amazing when I'm restricted mm-hmm. how it's like, oh, you know, you just feel differently when you're, you know, when you're working. It's like you said, it's like, it's like going into Ikea. I can't even go into Ikea. I just, I get a headache as soon as I walk in. It's like, oh, it's just, there's too many choices, too overwhelming. And then it's like, I got to get out of here because it's like too much. Mm -hmm. But yet I feel on one hand that I want to have all these choices because I want to be able to choose from 45 different colors of blue. But then when you start going, you're like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't make a decision now. Well, you know, you get decision paralysis. Yes. It's like, I've already made 14 decisions before I got to the blue. Which of the five adhesives am I using? Which paper? (laughs) Student grade or full 100% cotton? Exactly. Just give me a bar of chocolate and I'll watch a Hallmark movie. We're out of here. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's so funny. That's so true though. It's like, and you know, you want to go to Dick Blick and you want to go to these places, but then you, you're walking around and I don't know, two aisles in and I'm just like, oh, I, I yeah, there's just too many choices. Yeah. I remember <laughs> um, way back in the day when we were all scrapbooking and there were scrapbook stores mm. and I was really big into scrapbooking and my sister was going to do a little bit. She walked in the door of the scrapbook store, took two steps, literally froze and said, choose for me. I can't do this. Oh, wow. I can't do this. And we use that as a, you know, like a, yeah. a family story comparison. And I'll say to her, is it like the scrapbook store? She's like, yes, it's like the scrapbook store. Yeah, <laughs> I wow. know what that means. <laughs> Just the paralysis yeah. of all yeah. the choices. Like, yeah. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No. I'm checking out. I'll wait in the yep. car for you. Just get yep. with you. You pick for me. I love that. Pick for me. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like the um, go. It's also like the um, the Cheesecake Factory menu where you just oh, want to yeah. go order the same thing every time and don't even look at the menu because you're just like mm-hmm. about three or four pages page. in. You're just like, how can anybody make a decision? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So don't let those other types of limitations. Not not your not the limit, not just the limitations you've thought of in your mind about, I can't, or this won't, but these other limitations that are really not limitations, don't let those hinder you either. So just want to, right. That's important. So yeah. All right. Good talk. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was good. All right, guys, we sure appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed, you need to subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes and we love to hear from you. So please reach out to us. We'd love a good review. If you love us, leave us a review. That would be nice. And if you you have a comment, you have something Mm -hmm. to say, find us on Instagram and we would love to chat Mm -hmm. with you. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Until next week, you guys have an awesome, awesome day. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Creatives Get Real. We love hearing from you. So hop on over to Instagram and leave us a comment. And we also appreciate reviews on iTunes. And you can find me, Sandy Keen, at sandykeen.com and my classes at popupartclasses.com. And you can find me, Robin Marie Smith, at robinmarie.com. And if you're looking for and need tech support, check out my membership site, makerstechu.com.